Hey, 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 it's W5HRO. Here's an update on this amplifier. I've run into some problems with it, so I'm still kind of working on it. Um, first, what I determined was, and you, and you might have noticed in my last video, I mentioned that this was one of the early prototypes, which it was. But what I determined was, when I, this schematic that was re, you know revised from the factory in 74, this one was actually made in 1970. These original ones did come. They came with six LQ6s with the uh, different with the nine pin sockets. They came with six LQ6s and they eventually changed it to 8950s is what they did. But they originally came, these amps that had the one switch like this, these were the original ones when they first they first designed it. They did have six LQ6s. And I even searched online and I found one of the uh, old antique forums where somebody was saying that they had a uh, they had a guy that had one that somebody, his guy was trying to fix it for his friend and one of the tubes was shorted and so forth. And he thought, well, did somebody modify it to six LQ6s? And there's guys on the board going, yeah, somebody probably changed it. No, these original ones came with six LQ6s because this one had the same tubes in it. It had the original tubes in it, I think, or maybe not the original ones the driver was, but they were all the original RCAs, I'm sure. And uh, this amp had problems like this when it was first designed. And the one thing I noticed is, is that it, this thing had a tremor capacitor in here, which tuned the output of the driver tube and the input to the grids of the six LQ6s. That was, and I, I eventually, after I've gone through all the trouble I've gone through with this thing, I pulled it out and I measured it. That was a 20 peak of farad cap. And they had it screwed down all the way. So basically, what the first thing I did was I took this thing apart. I wanted to put six LF6s. And then I, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't plug the six LF6s in the sockets. And I realized, wait a minute. I forgot six LF6s are compactrons. 12-pin sockets instead of the 9-pin sockets. So what I had to do was I had to change out the sockets and everything. So then I put some my older, older I had some 6LF6s I'd used before, so I plugged them in there. And for some reason, when I would uh, I'd transmit, I'd put power into it, the carrier, it would only come up to, I could only load it up to about 20 watts output. I'm like, what's going on? So then I started screwing that cat, that trimmer down all the way like they had it. Because when I took it out, I, I unscrewed it a little bit, you know, and I was playing with it. And I, I scraped. They had that seal, that red seal where you couldn't move it. So I loosened that up before I started working on it just so I could have, be able to adjust it. But they already had it all the way down. Well, sure enough, when I... I screw that thing all the way down. The power jumped up, and it would it would jump up though only when I would whistle. I would whistle into the mic, and then the carrier power would come up. And it wasn't oscillation. It was because that cap wasn't there wasn't enough capacitance to make it work properly, especially with the uh, six LF sixes in there. The input capacitance is probably different. It's probably less, and it needed more. So that was the first thing I ran into. So then I added this thing in here. So then I put two, I had two brand new 6LF6s in the box and I put them in here and I started loading the thing up and that power came up right away. I got 150 watts. It actually, it was loading up to about 180 watts. It was coming up because the, the 6LF6s are hotter than the, uh, the 6LQ6s. They're, they're, they have higher output power. And then, all of a sudden, the one on the, this one over here on the far side shorted right away. It went blink and I went, what the heck happened? Well, actually, the first thing that happened to me was, was I had the, with the old tubes and I got the power to come up and when I whistle, it would come up with that cap screwed all the way down. I, I first I changed out all these coupling caps and the ones the ground the bite the chokes the ground and the coupling ones to the two from the plates of the tube to the tank circuits. Well, I I I get the I get these caps on Amazon and I got the ones that were like you know they were the point double o two twos. I thought well two kvs that's good enough because what they had in there was one kvs and I should know better. The stuff you get on Amazon it's made in China and it's just, so I started loading up and the thing shorted right away. Way. And when it did, it took out these two vibrator transistors, and I was so mad. So then, okay, I ordered, these are 10 kV. I thought, well, I know these will work. Same brands on Amazon, but they're 10 kV. I've used these before in the 20 kVs and the 30 kVs, on even on thousands of 
volt you know amplifiers or not they, they're not a problem you just have to go big enough the smaller ones you're, you're taking a gamble so i i knew i kind of knew when i did i thought but let me i was trying to cut the cost down because these bigger ones are are more expensive so i put those in there then what i did was when i put those in there i put my i had a brand new set of six lf sixes i had never used i still had two of them new in the box so i popped them in here and like i said the power came up to about 180 watts carrier all of a sudden boom that tube shorted and when that tube shorted it took out these guys again and I'm like what the hell I was so mad and I was able to adjust this and it was fine well that I actually put this in before I put those tubes in and I was adjusting it the power came up you know because this is like a 75 picofarad cap but when those tubes shorted it took these guys out a second time and I was so mad I'd replaced them once and then the darn things went out again. Surprisingly, you can still get those vibrator transistors. They're still available. And you can get them. I got those for like $10 a piece. So I did it again. So now I've gone through. Went, okay, let me look at this thing. Why did these 6LF6s short out? And I got to thinking about it. And I'm looking at the schematic, and I've looked at this before. I thought, well, I don't need low power on this thing. But then I got to looking at the circuit when they put the 8950s in here. They had six hundred. They had a six hundred and eighty ohm, ten watt resistor going to ground from the grid to ground, so the uh, grids were not just tied to ground. But the six LF sixes, they were tied directly to ground. And I went, oh, I didn't look at the switch thing properly. With low power, it just puts it adds the six eighty to the the grid of the, uh, the G one grid of the uh, driver tube as well. I went, oh, why they add these? So I started looking around the different schematics online, and there's a 200X model that had the same, it's a base linear, that had the same driver tube with two 6LF6s. And they had done the same thing, you know, they put this cap in there, like I've done an exact, well, because I'd seen that picture online before, so I kind of knew that's where I got the idea. But when I looked at the schematic for that one, they actually have a 40 ohm, when you're on high power, you got 40 ohms from G1 to ground. But I'm like, well, wait a minute. I've just blown brand new tubes. I don't think I have any 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 more good ones left. Let me think about it. And I thought, let me just start off. What I've done is I've gone in here and I've put some 1K resistors from the grids to ground. And I'm going to start out that way. And I'm going to I'm going to get some new tubes put in here. Well, I actually have a tube tester coming. I, I found a I found a really nice tube tester. I've been needing one forever, which will also do the compactron tubes. So I'm going to test all the six L lift sixes I have and see if any of them are any good. If I find a couple good ones, then I might try it again. The problem is this is the second set of these vibrator transistors I've I've put on here. I don't want to have to do it again. If they blow again, I'm probably just going to give up and scrap the amp. But uh, I think, but these 1K resistors, that's going to, at least that'll let me see how much output power I'm going to get. And I started thinking about it. This amp should really do no more than about 100 watts out. It'll do 46 watts per tube, you know, but... With driving them like that, I should be able to get it up to a full 100-watt carrier. Then it'll bounce up forward when I modulate, right? The peak envelope power will go up, the PEP power. That's really, it shouldn't really be any more than about 100 watts out. 150 is going to be too hard on the tubes. Maybe with the grid resistors, it might work, but this will limit it. So I'll see what it does, and I'll just keep... I tacked these in there. I didn't really make amount these permanent. I just sort of added them in there temporarily, loosely, just with some light solder, because I know I'm probably going to have to decrease the value. But I didn't want to blow another set of tubes. So I want to make sure that it's over-limited if it has to start out with, and I can just keep dropping these things down. And these are like 5 water, so I've got a 1K 5 watt on each one to ground. And I've got, there's 0.001 caps to ground on the other grid pin. So see what they did. They've got, see how they got that 0.001 cap? That's what they did with all the other amplifiers, even on the 200X. They've got, the, you know, the, 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 what, what they did was you got two pins that are actually G1. You got one pin on each side of the socket. So on one side of the socket, I went to, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, a grid to ground and then, 
you know, and uh, the same way on the other side. Then the other pin on the other side of the sockets, I've added the resistors to ground. So I'll just start out there. But now that I got the right grid input capacitance to be able to adjust this thing so this thing's properly tuned and I got full dry power in the tubes, I can just start backing down these 1Ks until I get the output power right at about 100 watts, maybe a hair bit more. I'll have to look to see what it's doing and uh, make sure it's uh, not hitting the rails one way or the other. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna have to do, but I've gone through this whole thing. And also the other thing is, the meter on this thing was never working, even the whole time I, I was testing this thing. So I took it out and the meter appears to be open. I don't know if that's if it's a magnetic type of conduction internally, but it appears to be open when I put my own meter across it. So I'm gonna take it apart and look at it, but it may be one of those magnetic types where as long as you got the energy going to it, it'll work. I'm not positive though, I need to figure that out. But what I noticed is that's the meter circuit and the wire was going up here all the way up to the meter. And the other, the other side of it was tied directly to ground. And I got to looking and the circuit that they eventually changed it to and the circuit I had was completely different. I didn't, I only had one capacitor to ground. The diode was turned the other way. That 1K was not a 1K, but the 22K was. So what I've done is I've actually gone through and I've made the circuit look exactly, it looks like they had a problem with it and they eventually turned the diode around the other way. And so when I had to add all the extra components, I, uh, I, there's not enough terminals. So I just, this is, this right here is the connection, if I can see what I'm doing. This is the connection that'll go to the meter, the wire. And I'm gonna run the wire around this way instead of going through this other way anyway, because the meter's up here. I'm gonna run it this way, down on the, below, way down along the bottom and up here to the meter. That's if the meter's any good. If it's open, I'm gonna try to repair it, which I've done that before. I've been able to repair them you know, in the past, so we'll see what happens. Looks like my phone got a little bit blurry, didn't it? I think maybe I touched it, maybe I smeared something on the lens. So uh, that's where I am on this thing. I'm still working on it. And also, I've got a big 72 amp switching supply. I'm gonna try to uh, hook up to it instead of that Astron supply and see if it'll power this thing. So it's a 13.8 volt, 72 amp switching supply. I'll have to see though, I'm hoping it'll light the tubes up. So we'll see what happens. I mean, if it may start up where it gets, it, it's gonna see like a short when it first tries to power the tubes up. So I'll have to see what happens, you know, when that first initializes to see if it goes in the limiting or not where the output goes to zero. But I won't know until I hook it up, but I'm gonna wait till I get my tube tester and see see what if I have any good 6LF6s before I do anything else. So that's the story on this and uh, yeah, it looks like I made it blurry, didn't I? I must have got some stuff on the lens, so we'll say 73s, and that's all for now. This is W5HRO.